What? Why do you wait to go live and then you start doing bullshit? Well, at least now we have a cold open. It's all a lot of simple tricks and nonsense. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Simple Tricks and Nonsense. I'm one of your hosts, Matt Kearns, and my co-host is... Hey, Brown Flux, how are you? <laughs> we're working, Dude, on, the, know, we're, we're would... working on the co-host thing. This is a first show, so he's actually, like, one of the main people. He's used to, like, on with the winter late night to where he can just, like, sit and... and just have someone else do the shit and then randomly go, so Abe, what do you think about that? He's, he's, he's getting used to it. He's getting used to it. Okay, uh, so. Can you say something? Yes. You know something I always wanted to do when I was in school? During a presentation, you know, you present yourself. Hi, my name is Abraham Flores. I always wanted to say after that, hi, my name is Abraham Flores and I'm an alcoholic. Oh, uh, you want, you want to be one of those people? people yeah. Yes, yes. But I never did it. But you were Just so I'm a professional. Yeah, well, you were a professional. That's changed for certain. I have a bachelor's degree, Matthew. I, I have a bachelor's degree, right degree too. Mine is in biology. I have a Mine is in media communications. <laughs> Whatever. So Matthew. I think I have to ask you a question. Okay. So, I guess people have seen the title below. Right here. Well, more in the Matthew side of things. So, so again, I was shows. Uh, this is not a democracy. It's a authoritarian type of government. I won't call it a dictatorship. We're authoritarian. So, Matthew, what was the first movie? And tell me your experience, what do you remember that you watching theaters? Uh, so, we, we talked about this earlier. Um, my first movie experience that I can remember, um, and again, it's, it's possible that maybe I went to a movie before this, but the first one I can really remember is Monsters, Inc. Um, I remember going to uh, the same AMC that I still go to today was... It was the whole family, me, my mom, my dad, my sisters, and my brother. Um, we might have pre-bought tickets because I don't remember. Uh, and again, pre-buying tickets, that was 2001, was like literally going to the theater, buying the tickets beforehand and just having them. I think we did that because I don't remember waiting online to get into the movie. Weird thing is that I remember... Because this movie was out around the same time as Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius. I remember there being like a kiosk thing when we were walking into the theater that was selling like Jimmy Neutron rocket ships. And I just remember thinking it looked cool. Um, and yeah, uh, loved loved the movie. Um, it was the first Pixar movie I'd ever seen in theaters. Uh, it was the first movie I ever saw in theaters in general. Uh, and, and something that sticks out was it, it was either raining... Before we got there, it was starting to rain when we came back because I just remember being in our, our um, Suburban and all of us were, you know, like the windows were getting foggy and we were all like drawing characters like Mike Wazowski and Randall and, and um, you know, um, Sully and Boo. We were all like drawing the pictures in the fog. Uh, so that's, that's the first movie I remember going to. And then a couple weeks later, yeah, I saw so, Harry Potter and so Sorcerer's Stone. I watched those two on theaters, actually. Uh, I remember, just to, to, to tell the story, I remember the first time I watched Monster Inc. Like, I have these little flashbacks of the situation. I remember being standing right in front of the theater, and, well, like, the, literally almost the ceiling, there was these movie posters, and I remember seeing the, the Monster Inc. movie poster. And I was like, oh, well, of course we were going to watch animated movies. That's the only thing you watch as a kid. My my, my older sister hated me. <laughs> she hated me. And my middle sister, I guess, hated us because we were always have to watch those because of us. She's like eight, eight years older than us. And the times we went to watch like other 
type of movies. It's like, you know, uh, after, you know, standing there, I remember going to the theater a little bit late, just a little bit, because uh, the title sequence was playing when the doors and the, and the little, I think it's monsters, right? Like monster style drawings come out and it's just for, uh, for me, the title of Monsters, Inc. And that's, yeah. that's how I remember my first experience in Monsters, Inc. I remember watching the theater. I don't remember the seat, but I still remember the, uh, how you call it, the theater, right? Yeah, the theater. I don't know what you mean. Theater? That's the place where you saw the movie? Yes, I mean, I just theater. got to ask. Yeah, not the what? movie theater. It's, it's different. In Spanish, different. I know that. I, I don't know. In Spanish, different. In Spanish, is the sala. La sala. Like, like a sala. You know, okay. like, you know Spanish, right? Yeah. Nope. Whatever. Took French. Uh, but, but, <laughs> Mon but Monsters, Inc. So, Matt, I have to ask you. Yes. Do you remember what did you think about the movie when you... I, like, I loved it. I, I, I thought it was great. I mean, was by that processing point... processing that deep, the deep points of a movie like Monsters, Inc. About... No. I thought it was Taking funny. Taking down I, that corporate America of 2001. Oh, oh, it was funny. I, I still remember the opening sequence <laughs> when, uh, when it's, it's, he's, the monster's, like, going in, and, and you think it's, like, really, you think it's, like, the kid being put to sleep, and the monster shows up, and then the kid screams, and the monster screams, and he falls on the jacks, and the soccer ball hits him, and then, um, you know, um, leaving the door open is bad because it could in a draft <laughs> like I just remember laughing at that movie it was so funny uh, you know all, all this stuff um, I don't remember Randall scaring me I think he scared my brother uh, I loved Mike Wazowski because he was green and my favorite color has always been green Mike so Mike was my Mike Wazowski um, yeah I just loved the movie and it, it was one of those movies that we got on DVD and we just watched over and over again but it's one of those that whenever I revisit it it's still as good as I remember um, and it's only gotten funnier like there's there's just jokes and things uh, particularly from Billy Crystal that are just like way funnier now than they were back then Roz I mean growing up my brother used to always do um, I'm watching you with that always watching um yeah <laughs> such a good movie um uh, do you I, remember the mcdonald's I, toys those are great toys they all came with a, a scare door i i lost i i still have um i have the um the abominable snowman but i lost my mic a long time ago but uh welcome I to the himalayas <laughs> the yellow the Adam. yellow Oh my god, when he's giving the snow cones, he's like, uh, there's like the white ones, and the yellow one goes, it's okay, it's lemon. <laughs> I don't remember those toys. You don't remember what, the just... scene? No, I'm seeing it online, they look like fun. Yeah. I mean, I watched in theater, like, probably this was one of the. No, no, first, because I was watching movies in theater since I was two, so we're going to talk about it later. But Monsters, like, having the experience of Monsters, things, I do remember me and my sister, like, imitating Ross. It's Ross, right? That lady? Yeah, Ross. Lady. Yeah. yeah. And the funny thing is that I don't, I never watched Monsters, Inc. in English. It's one of those things that I've never done. Because as a kid, like, they would play in Spanish. And I have different voices, like when you say Sully or Mike Wasowski, it's like, that's a different voice in my head. Like, I've, I've watched clips of uh, John Goodman and, and Bill Crystal, but, but for me, it's it's a, it's a different experience watching it. Like, you change something about my, about my feelings. And it's not until later that I've been able to watch many of those. I remember as a kid, really liking the movie. Like, it was one of those things that, you know, as a kid, when you like the movie, you just want to play around it. Like, you want to, to experience it one way or another. And I remember having these stickers we bought. I don't know how we, how many years later, but I mean, I had Monster Sink in VHF, so of course. And yeah. I remember having these stickers. And there's this door at my dad's house, which I think is still there. And it, it, ha it still has the Monsters Inc. stickers. Because I found Aww. it so fucking great. Like, 
Like, maybe that door isn't trash right now. <laughs> I don't remember. Um, do you, did you ever get the wife, DVD? But like that, that I have... St- what? Did you ever get the DVD of Monster? No, Day? I mean the door. No, I always, I always had the door. Oh, just the VHS. Because there was a great, just talking about door, and everything reminds me of on the DVD, there was a great um game where you were like, trying to find Boo's, like, the pieces to Boo's doors, and it, it was, you had to, like, go through the, you would go through a door, and it'd be, like, you'd be in China, and you'd have to, like, look around all the different spots to find the door. It was a really fun game. I'm sorry, just when you said stickers and door, it just made me think, I'm sorry, continue. Apologize. Oh, no, but, but Monster, you know, one, one of those scenes that as a key you were really epic, because it is, when the I don't know how they're called in English, the scariers. What's what's Sully? What's Sully's position? He's a scarer. A scarer. Okay, I yeah. don't know. I don't know. I, are you are I you talking watched. about the right stuff shot? Yeah, when they're walking like marching to. The, I always as a kid, I always find the most epic. Yeah, oh, like as a kid, I just remember seeing it, and and I think that was older than because I was in like in like uh what's after kindergarten why am i first grade kind of no what's the name of first to fifth to sixth grade uh some people elementary call primary school, school elementary grade school elementary. yeah i elementary school okay. for me as well okay elementary school i remember my friend having one of these i was probably seven years has had this like reading book about the movie you know and i don't know it's, mm-hmm. it wasn't a novelization because it had pictures i don't know how you call it like, it was a storybook yeah, yeah, story it was a storybook book. i i have a phantom I, menace one of those yeah I, I remember having like he borrowed it to me like in class and i just remember drawing myself because i was so fucking great but uh not yet i have to ask about this yeah. Uh, what do you think about the topics of taking down on the corporate American changing the way uh, people think about how we do things in the in the labor environment the commentary monster thing has uh, it's honestly it's a legitimately <laughs> I think I there is a commentary of you want to look at it because there's water news they've been doing scare power for so long. That's how they've always done it. It's always been scaring, scaring, scaring. And now they're trying to create this really horrible machine to just, like, get more scares from kids and only to have it be that through this journey of Mike and Sully with Boo that they discover that, like, laughing and, like, joy is a lot better. Uh, so they could, I, again, were they thinking that when they wrote it? Maybe. I, I think Pixar is one of those companies that is smart enough that I could totally believe that they, they wrote that and they had that in mind. So this like, you, you have to sort of be able to look at things differently, um, than they've been done just because they've been done for, I, I mean, that's just. I mean, you know, for how many years uh, did we never think of, like, building a railroad? And then, you know, and, like, cars. Like, it was always a horse and buggy. And then someone was like, will we put one of them engines inside a horse and buggy and take the fucking horse away? You know, like, it, it, it's that's the incredible thing I think about humans and engineers and everything. is just, like, there's always people who just, like, go, okay. That's good, but it could be better. You know, it's like, uh, what's his name from Wonder Woman 84, which I still haven't watched yet, but I know that meme. That's like, yeah, like, that's the legitimate oh, thing, and, and I'm not go. trying to be, I'm not trying to be jerky when I, when I say that. I mean, legitimately, it's a cool thing, and it applies to a lot of different things. It's not even just an engineer. You look at, like, movies. Look at guys like Steven Spielberg and George Lucas in the 70s who are like, Okay, so that's one way to do movies. But what if we did this? You know, like, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think about how funny that movie is. And it makes me laugh. Like, um, hey, hey, don't talk to him, guys. You're going to make him lose his focus. Sorry, Mr. Sullivan. Beauty, you're making him lose his focus. Sorry. Shut up. I know I've seen you. I'm just thinking about. <laughs> you hear that? It's the winds of change. 
you you did you can win the team. You know what? One day I'm gonna really let you teach that guy a lesson. <laughs> Such a good movie. So what's what's for you? What's the funniest line or scene in the movie? Oh my god! I have mine. Funniest? I have mine. I, I know mine. Okay. okay. I can tell you mine. So you okay. Tell tell me yours since you have it ready to go. Okay, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to translate it or what exactly he says, but after you know the debacle in the in the Chinese restaurant and they interview yeah. the people, and these guys tells that a kid jumped from I don't know where and she attacked me with ki- with her les- laser, <laughs> her eyes, laser or eyes. Like she then flipped over me and vaporized him with her laser eyes. <laughs> yeah, that thing. I I something just played because I needed to hear it. Because I love the way it's delivered. Well, the guy put that delivers is just incredible. Oh and it's something I still quote with my friends, like, he met the, and I, well, it's Spanish, and he attacked me with, his, with her lazy ass. You know, just to add exaggeration to something, but it's one of those things they quote in my life, and I've been quoting for a long time. Um, For me, it's, and again, these are just, because honestly, no one has ever asked me. I've never really had to sit down and think about it. It's two. That's why the first. Movie show. The, the first is, and I've already said it, it's when the abominable snowman, um, he brings the the ice pops, and he's just like, um, don't worry, it's it's lemon, because it's yellow snow, so Mike's like, did you pee in that? And the other one, it, God, there's so many, but I guess, um, God, there's a lot. Like, off the top of my head, the other funny one that comes in. Because there's an exchange between Roz and Mike, but I just can't think of the lines right now to where, like, she's like, uh, and I hope she finds you paperwork. It's something about an enchanted name, but I can't remember. But the other one is when they're trying to have, they're trying to get Boo to laugh to unlock the door. And Mike's doing everything he possibly can. And then one bunny just goes, these are the jokes, kid. Because I have used that in my life so many times. Because I say things that only I find to be funny. But those are the, the two that come to mind. I mean, again, the the uh, I just quoted them again. Those two guys. Uh, Sorry, Mr. Sullivan. You idiot. You're making them lose his focus. Sorry. Shut up. You know what? I, which, which line I also find funny? What scene? Uh... What's the number that guy gels when he has his little kids? We have a 2319! 2319! 2319! Well, in Spanish, 33, which is 1319. So it's 2319. But that scene, I have to. Can you just have it? Can you just have it? But that scene, I find it hilarious. That whole it's, sequence is, it's just how like it's just so perfect because like the guys come in they're like busted through the windows they're coming in they're like all right all the right there and then they like zoom down boom and then they it's like wow thanks guys that's a close shower it's just shit you know what's so funny about it? Like, like, and then later, fucking... when the stuff all falls out, and the dude's like, do I read? And grabs it and just shoves the stuff down. <laughs> and he comes you like, know what's so and the sad about is, it? And the, first, the best part is that the first time it happens is right after when uh, Mike's talking to the dude, he's like, we're like brothers. And he sees the subject just immediately <laughs> sells them out. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say like his friend who sold him out. Like he could have just said, "Hey man, you have something in your back. Move it off." Yeah, but he could have. That, that's be, but that's, that's the importance the... of being a professional. Oh, you God. have to follow just... protocol. Another hilarious moment, just talking about how much these scared kids is. You have the one really big dude with the long, like Frank Krueger claws, and he opens the door, and there's like Ryan who's like, "She almost touched me. She came this close to me. I could have died." No, because then he's like. She wasn't scared of you. She was six. I could have died, man. I could have been dead. <laughs> it's just, they, they have these huge monsters. <laughs> She's scared of a six-year-old. <laughs> she did. It's so perfectly done. I could have 
have it yeah. dead. I love that. <laughs> I'm so sorry to anyone you know, listening. Uh, you know something I've noticed about you so many times, and it's just a little tangent, that you're able to quote movies so much better than a lot of people I know because I cannot quote for shit. I know the SQL 2517 from Pulp Fiction, and that's a quote of a movie I know. The path of the righteous man is beset on all sides with the iniquities of the selfish and the tyranny. But your ability to quote films amazes me, Matthew. How do you it- achieve that? And how do you think Monsters in- influence the importance of coding films? Well, it, honestly, Monster, it's honestly, because it's not every movie. Like, let's say if I, I'm trying to pick. So I rented The Darkest Hour with Gary Oldman. I've never seen that movie. Uh, Want to watch it. I probably wouldn't be able to quote that movie. Maybe if there's a really memorable scene, maybe I might be able to. But, like, I've been watching Monsters, Inc. since 2001. I've been watching this movie for 20 years, and I watched it. That's the that's the thing about me is is I watch movies. I don't like. I try to see new movies, but I mostly just like rewatch movies. And so there's just movies that I've been watching for so long, like the first six Star Wars movies or Monsters Inc., Toy Story one and two, uh, The Sandlot, that I just they're just ingrained in my head because I watch them so many times that like. They're just in there, and I just have them just forever in my brain. Uh, that's that's why I think I'm, I'm able to do it. Ultimately, Monsters, Inc., it's just one of those really fun movies from my childhood that I've just continued to keep watching. I think it's a really sweet movie about friends. Um, you know, Mike and Sully, uh, Sully and Boo, obviously, that trio. It's just a fun movie, too, and... and I thought Monsters University was okay. I, I only saw it once. I thought it was pretty good, but I am happy that they've never done a Monsters Inc. 2 because I don't think you need it. You know, like I think ending it with Sully opening the door and Kitty and his smile, like it's just like, that's it. That's all you need. Everybody's happy. Every Literally, Montropolis is in a really good spot. Like, if you, you know. And I think I'll end with just another funny line that just jumped in my head when they throw Randall through the door and he gets trapped the chores. Mama, there's a gator in the house. Hey, with that shovel. <laughs> so, Abe, what are your just wrap-up thoughts on uh, Monster Zanger? Is there anything else you want to talk about? Any lines you want to quote that have randomly jumped into your head like mine? No, like, dude, the thing is, like, there's a point of quoting there in Spanish. Uh... You know who wouldn't talk about Randall? I think Randall is so good of a villain. He he's sneaky, he's smart, he knows what he's doing, and he's I mean he's a scarer. He's as good as Sully and whatever you want to worry about. But yeah, Steve Buscemi did a really good job with that. Um, which is so funny because like, so I guess I've never seen Reservoir Dogs. I, I've never seen Fargo. Like, I know Steve Buscemi is, like, the guy who's been in, like, Adam Sandler movies. You know, like, you know, and, like, Donnie from Big Lebowski. You know, like, that's... I know Steve Buscemi is that now. So, like, when I watch him, I'm just like, wow, he's, like, a really funny actor. But he is, like... He's pretty intimidating. Like, that scene when um, Sully is saving Boo, and he's, like chasing him through the thing like when he finds the machine's been unplugged uh no he's saving mike in that scene like he's really like threatening and scary um yeah also i rode the monsters in Dude, ride. I, that was a disney world and that was a fun ride i don't think we talk about that final sequence where they chase chasing through the doors I find it so fucking incredible as a kid. And right it, now... Like that, the when they have the moment so to where you just... It's... Great. Yeah. Pixar is just... They're masters. Like, you just look at that. And yeah, and then you have the funny thing of, like, the different, just, like, rooms that, like, fall through the doors. And it's like... Uh, there's even a joke about that. There's a joke about, like, Paris or something. Or one of the places they go to. And so he's like, come on, Mike. Um, yeah. Mm, too. <laughs> See, Ted's walking to work. A ah, big deal. Ted takes three steps and he's there. You know why I buy the car for the room, room and the Hong Kong? 
I we have to move on because Absolutely. I'm just gonna sit here and quote more figs of Monsters Inc. Where am I? I don't know, Monsters just... Incorporated. Be scared because we care. I just, Human I children I are harder to scare. Which is that scene when they're showing the kid and it's just like all the murder and violence, he just falls asleep. Always reminds me of the scene from um, the Jim Carrey, How the Grinch So Christmas, to where he's like trying to scare Cindy Lou Who and he just looks at the camera and goes, Kids, so de- desensitized by movies and television. Oh you my god. Last I, thing I want to say, I think yeah. Monster Sing so works so good because of the world building. You believe yeah. that world exists because of the dynamics and it's so similar to the humans. But the fact that they show, they literally show, show the work and the and the what they do and everything. I think that what what works so good. And what I and like I, too I it, I is is that I feel like comparing because I know Monsters Inc has been compared to the Nickelodeon series, uh, uh Real Monsters. The thing I like about Monsters Inc too is that it shows that like not every monster like that's a company like that's just like that's the electric company are the scarers but there's just the guys run the hibachi plays and there's the like bodego person you know like i like that they show that it's just like not all monsters are scary some monsters are just like having their you know day like the poor jelly monster who just walks across the grates and his body falls in <laughs> he's like uh nuts <laughs> or the, the one monster who's reading the paper he sneezes but he has like fire the paper he's like um yeah I, I like that too i like the fact that because i feel like that's usually how like monster worlds are portrayed it's like everyone's scary it's like here it's like no it's some of their jobs are just i mean even you look at like mike isn't even a scarer he's just like the dude who just like preps doors for Sully. like that's his job i i, I really like the world there I, fi- I think it's like, incredible but hey now we have that question. Unless well, Monsters, Inc. is the first movie you remember seeing in theaters. What is the first movie you remember seeing in theaters? I don't know why I'm doing a Captain Kirk, but Risk is our business. That is why we're aboard the spaceship Simple Tricks and Nonsense. A florist. Look, Matthew. Yes. I guess it was kind of the summer of 1999. You remember it that was summer, the right? summer of 1999. <laughs> well, uh, the first movie I watched in theaters is Stars. And I don't have many memories of it. I just have this flash. Like, I know I had to watch this flashback that it's so ingrained in my head for a really long time. When Tarzan is like going through the jungle, like on a POV shot, when he's he's growing up, the sequence when he's growing up, he's becoming Tarzan. He's becoming a man. Yeah, I have that ingrained. I I have that ingrained to my head. When I he's like trying to put the mud on him so he looks more like the apes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, I forget what you, song is playing in that. Which which one on the soundtrack is playing during that? Well, yeah, but. I, re- I just remember being so immersed in that and like being awe as a child like what am I watching and why am I a, a little a, a really big dark room with a ton of adults and why am I quiet? but that that's the first experience that that's what it's ingrained to my head it's just something I know I know I watch it because I was you know I was two years old by that time and I know I was watching movies at the time because I, I also I mean, just a side note, we're not going to talk about this movie, we can talk about it if we want. I, I, I remember watching Toy Story 2 that year too, because it came out the same year, but it came out in yeah, November, 99. and I have the, the Barbie talking at the end. Please, go ahead and... I Goodbye know, now! I have that Bye-bye. in my head. Bye-bye! Bye-bye! I remember, I remember we were we were one of the last people in the theater because we were watching that like people had yeah. left already but we were one of the last people in the theater and i remember watching that i was watching movies at two years old and i remember like it's crazy to remember that Pretty was like, that for... was toy story 2 the first time they did bloopers or or did they have no they had bloopers in bugs life if i'm not mistaken i think they had bloopers mm-hmm. in bugs life first mm-hmm. no No, because no, uh, Bugs uh, Life, I distinctly uh, remember I when Princess Anna is talking to Hopper, 
and she's like Julia Louis Dreyfus is like laughing a lot. So I think it was Bugs Life was the first time they did bloopers. Yeah, Bugs Life. Yeah, I recently watched it. I wasn't. I only saw. Bugs Life. I didn't I see Bugs Life in theaters. I I saw it on video, same as Toy yeah, Story man. Two. So yeah, I I honestly don't know if that was maybe something they added to the VHS release. No, I don't know honestly. I watched it recently. Well, I watched it in Disney Plus, so I don't know if that counts. Maybe Bugs Life, that's a good movie, but we don't need to talk about that. Tarzan, yeah. for but God's that, sake, Abe. That's that's my memory of Tarzan. Like, just that memory that I know I watch it in theaters, and there's no other way I would have watched that movie first in 1999. But, we you know, you can ask me questions, but I'm just going to rumble about it and see what we're going to talk I was going to ask As you what your thoughts on Tarzan, Tarzan are. And if... What? I said I was going Make to ask you what your thoughts on Tarzan are. Okay. So what are your thoughts uh, on Tarzan? I really love this movie. I really love this movie. And it really takes you into this journey of a guy growing up in a part where he's not uh, well respected or liked. And he has to earn his spot by the end of, and uh, by the end of the movie he loves. And in the way he he finds love. Well, it's really only his, his dad. He's not respected by pretty much everyone else. I feel like embraces him. It's it's his dad who's just a dick. Exactly, and that's a problem because we as a society, we as a society, <laughs> what am I a fucking joke? We're a society. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're in a society that we uh, uh, everybody uh. can approve of us. But if somebody really important to us does not, like we have that equation to our head. It's the one that messed you up. It's the one. And that person is the one, and for him, it, and for Tarzan, it's really important to prove his father wrong. Like he actually, he actually belongs because his, uh, his, yeah, his, 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 I don't know what I'm thinking. His mother, like he, she embraces him from the beginning, and and I find it, and and I mean, he finds love at the middle of the movie, and I love that. I lo- I, mm-hmm. I'm a sucker for romantic, for romance in films. And I guess it's one of those that brings <laughs> brings up yeah. because it's obviously that happened. Uh, but yeah, like it's just, so. And as a kid, yeah, I, I I agree with that too. I think, and if you don't have someone in your life who's been like that, congratulations. But I I've certainly have had people in my life who I I felt like I have to try to impress. Therapy. You know, like you try to impress, and it's yeah, it sucks. But you know, whatever. Um, so you said you like the romance between Jane and Tarzan. Now I have to ask you a question. If say the boat that Tarzan was on never set on fire, and him and his parents were totally fine, so we never got raised by apes. Okay, Jane and her crew would still be there. Do you think? She ends up with Cliff at all, or not? Cliff, who's Cliff? Because he's got a thing for Jane. It's pretty clear he's got a thing for her. Oh, Cliff is Clayton, right? Clayton, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah I was like, who's Cliff? Yeah, Cliff? Oh my god, we're talking about yeah, I'm sorry. I'm so unprepared. <laughs> yeah, Clayton. Clayton. Yeah, I'm unprepared too. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, Clayton. Do you think she winds up with you Clayton? Know, I, I don't know what year the movie said. But if we look at the historical context, manly guy, it's the same as Gaston and Bell. Yeah. You know, I think I think that, that those films, like in the middle of the of the Disney Renaissance, truly really show like a different kind of woman. Like that was stereotypical lady in distress. I mean, they have some lemons, sadly, but they, you know, like uh, Jane is, is 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 the. It's really smart. She's a scientist. He, he she works with his father. Yeah, she she's just out of her own. She's that's that's yeah. the thing. She's out of her. She is really smart. And she knows what she's doing. It's just she's not in an element that she's used to. That's the problem. That's where that's Tarzan comes in. Yeah, no, I yeah. I agree. I think the Dis- I think that was a big thing of and a very like that was something they were really thinking of was like okay, so we've had some protagonists in the past like Cinderella who are are really good. But but then we got like Sleeping Beauty, who is like kind of dull as a main character, or Snow White. Snow, you know, like Snow White is the like. Talk to my sister about this. Snow White, when you really look at that movie, she's kind of just getting lucky throughout it. You know, the evil queen wants to kill her, and the huntsman won't do it 
because she's too hot. Like, he literally says, he's like, you're too beautiful. She breaks into the dwarf's house, and they're literally seconds from murder, and then they see she's hot, and they're like, all right, you can stay here. Like, that was old school Disney female lead. So, yes, I agree. By the time they got to Little Mermaid, they were like, yeah, we should probably um, not Yeah, do but, that. like, when you, when you go a little further, like, like you can think about Pocahontas and Mulan because they like from the from the same time, you know. Mulan or Meg. Well. Meg's a totally different Disney exactly. uh, princess. Exactly. So they they have these yeah they 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 challenge the 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 stereotype of a woman in those animated films, which is there and we still see it right now. Thankfully, we see it because we see better characters at all, like for men and for women. Yeah, That's they. I I think that, I don't mean. I, I, I mean this entirely when I say it, like, like, Meg and Belle walked so that Elsa and Anna could run. Like, legitimately, you yeah, don't, so I don't think you get to Frozen if they didn't have characters like that during the Renaissance. But at the end, what, what wins is the power of love. That's the power of love! So, I think friendship, it's one of those things that they feel, I think Tarzan has probably the best friends between Dirk and, what's the name of that guy? Rosie O'Donnell? Yeah. I don't... I, dude, I'm sorry, but I don't know Rosie O'Donnell voice. Like, I <laughs> oh, was that's right. I forgot. We talked about this. Yeah, you don't know Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know who she is, but, like, I don't have her voice in my head. Like, like how where people... Do you have... I, legitimate question, and well, if you don't I mean, know I'm the sorry. cast, is fine. Did they get a woman places. to voice the character as well, or did they get a man? Uh, I think it's a woman. Yeah, it's I, a woman. I always the thought it was a woman. Monkey, is a woman. But I could be wrong. I don't know, honestly. I, I have always, watched it a lot. I always... No, no, she's a female. I always thought her... I, yeah. I, I always thought him... I thought her as a man, too. Because, of course, you think about that stereotypical... Of course, a man is going to have a man best friend, you know? That's what you have Unfortunately, to yes. My small pea mind thought that back in the early yeah, I'm sorry. I haven't watched the movie in a while. You know what I have watched? Yeah, well, I don't watch the movie a lot, but you know what I do watch? I watch that opening all the time. The Two Worlds, One Family opening sequence. That's one of my favorite opening sequences to any Disney movie. I think it's incredible. Like, it starts with the ship on fire and Tarzan's Dan, dad dive into the water. And they they show up and they start building the house. And at the same time, you see the ape family and all that. And you have the... The shot of the the leopard, like kind of just, uh, it's really good. And then of course you get the mom, you get the ape family. Their son gets killed by the leopard, and then she hears the cries of the baby. It's I, it's really dark. And there's like a moment when she goes into the house and she walks over the gun, and you actually hear like screams and you hear like gunshots, and then she finds the baby. It's really dark but it's a really great opening i love that song that is a question i want to ask you after but what are your thoughts on the opening sequence first but then to lead into that i know a lot of people have a problem with this movie that the characters don't sing it's just a phil collins singing what the characters are feeling so opening sequence what are your thoughts on that and then what are your thoughts on the songs and the characters not actually singing apart from the one song uh. where the opening sequence. That shit was scary as a kid. That's dark sequence. Like you can put that in any film and it will be dark. Like live you do that live action, that gets Bro, a fucking They the show Tarzan's parents like laying dead on the ground. Like, you know, it's not yeah, like, like they're they they're not there, like, oh they're there. You see that. You don't see their like ripped up bodies, but you see that. And also dead it's so big like remember right now I haven't watched Tarzan in a while but I mean I watched many times that I took a book but it's so beautiful and animated like the color palette like in the in the in the in the in the ocean with the boat is oh it's oh well, and the fire yeah, and it's like I think the boat is like CGI but the fire and everything is like 2D it was it was still during that time when CGI hadn't taken over animation so they were doing a really good job of like blending it yeah and I also I love that, that, like, they clearly they clearly designed Tarzan first, and then because his dad is literally just his model, which is, like, different hair, but I, I kind of like that. I kind of like that 
he he was like the spitting image of his father that he, he never really got to know. Yeah, like that that sequence was something. Also, it always scares me. Like it's it really it really takes you to a journey because the movie it starts kind of scary because you know the that part when guess... the when the baby ape starts chasing the frog like that always freaked me out as a kid whenever I watched it. Because, like, you yeah. literally, the parents are watching as the leopard is, like, ripping. And then they have the thing of, like, the baby is, like, running. And then they literally, and you're like, oh, my God. But that's so Disney, right? That's, the sequences like that are why I always get annoyed when people are like, oh, Disney is just, they make kids movies. I'm like, no, they don't. No, that, no, that's not a kids movie moment. You know, you wouldn't see that in the Playmobil movie. Like... You know? Yeah, like they, they 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 sometimes put the envelope and they go to PG because there's not blood or there's not like really hard and because they aren't animated. The fact that things are animated, you can do things like the Transformers. That's just, like he put the Transformers into humans, like in human things, really or something like that. You get R rated because it's really violent. Yeah, it, that's just that him. is the thing. It's like Nostalgia Critic has a joke about that. He he reviewed Osmosis Jones, and there's a scene when like the main villain goes into like the like Godfather's like it's like in a sauna, and he like tears the dude apart, and like he's bleeding green, and he's like, okay, if this was if that was red, this would be an R-rated movie, but because it's animated and green, it's fine. It's it's a weird thing. Um, but what are your thoughts on the songs? What What's your thoughts on the Phil Collins songs and the fact that the characters aren't singing them? Which I think this is I, I, one of the first times Disney did that. I don't, I don't know what to tell you because I never heard that criticism of characters not singing the songs. No, no, no. Like, yeah, I've heard it before. Heard, yeah, maybe because I'm so gray on my wonderful idealized world of Tarzan being so fucking good that I don't really care what people think about it. You just you, well, you, you you don't listen to the negativity. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't care. Like, when they criticize it, like, dude, no, you don't know what you're talking about. You have to analyze it deeper. No, but like, that that was never a problem to me. Like, even older when I watched, like, it's like, no. Also, Phil Collins has an incredible voice. Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? All like, the songs dude, are good. Dude, you and the wonderful will... thing is family trust your heart faith like despair. you can hear both and you can actually feel the same you can actually feel like the same emotion when you have the same singer whatever you want and the same writer and same composer i guess doing everything like you get the feeling because he's able to sing in spanish which is so great and you get mm -hmm. the exact same feeling like there's no oh, phil collins does the spanish sound wow that's really cool yes that's awesome yeah yeah like he crushes like, I was talking with a friend the other day, just, when you dub something, what if you don't have the same performance, you really get the same performance. Like, you you lose some authenticity. But, yeah, I came out with Phil Collins. Unless you're Phil Collins, that you're able to do both and able to convey the same emotions you want to convey, you don't lose any authenticity in that. There's like, no, the yeah, because, like, I, I, that is a problem with, it. and I dealt with that. There's there's a movie I love, um, Jean-Claude Van Johnson. Uh, J JCVD. Uh, it's a great movie, but it was it it was made in French, but they have dubbed it in English. And I think he does the English dialogue, but the problem is, is that like, it's a very emotion driven movie for Van Damme, and and but like when he's on set and he's doing, it, he's like all the emotion, but like when he's in a booth just having to like try to recreate that in english like it's totally and especially a lot of times when you're dubbing particularly I think animated stuff like you're having to match mouth movements of someone else like it's dubbing is a really it's a difficult thing to get right so i think it is really lucky that phil collins was able to do it in spanish as well because he he's the original singer so he's able to bring the same emotion to both versions no like animate well i mean we're going on a tangent but just to comment animate it's different because it's animated you really don't feel the mouth like you have to really be like locking your eyes into the animation yeah. into the mouth to notice the difference when matching but usually animated movies i don't have a problem seeing in dub because it's something i grew up with and something that I, yeah but i cannot I, 
I cannot watch like live action movies. I cannot hear Robert Downey Jr. with a different voice. I'm sorry, but that's not Robert Downey Jr. As much as you want to tell me, he's not Robert Downey Jr. He's not the same performance. Ultimately, I think but Phil Collins' like, soundtrack yeah. is fantastic. I think it's incredible. And one of his and, songs has meant and, more and, to and, me and, this year than before because of a thing that happened to me and... I cried listening to the song, and that song is now attached to me forever. So, when you take yeah. and uh, you can listen to that soundtrack when when you take it out of the movie, like those songs can work independently as a single soundtrack. Like, like two words, two worlds. Sorry, it's it's like I love the song because you can apply it to many things in your life. Well, especially if you're, if you're in that mood with somebody. But, you know, I don't gonna I don't. I want to talk about him listening to Tarzan soundtrack when he got a crush on a girl in high school, but that's a different story. We don't need to get into. Two Hashtag worlds, went to hell. no family. You've been friend zoned the whole time. You're going to run away. You know what? I talking about Toy Story two. I remember they had a preview for Tarzan on the Toy Story two VHS tape. Because I remember them talking about the music on there. I remember that. Yeah. I saw, I remember we went yeah. to Disney and we saw, this was in the early 2000s, they were doing like a Tarzan like stage show and we saw it. And we have video of part of it on one of our, our home, home movies. I remember seeing that and that was pretty cool. Do you remember the first time you watched Tarzan? Or like, I don't remember the first time I watched Tarzan. Tarzan was one of those that we never owned. But it was on Disney Channel all the time, um, and my cousins owned it, and I always really liked it. I remember growing up, there was the the TV series they had. I remember yeah, I that was that. on Disney as well. But yeah, I always it was, it was like Hercules. Like I didn't own Hercules growing up, but Hercules, Aladdin, Tarzan, those were movies that whenever they were going to be on TV, I always knew. And I was always really excited to watch them. Um, yeah, I love Tarzan, and I always remember that opening sequence. Um, I guess that's the thing that stuck with me. The mo- that and, like, Clayton's death are, like, the two things that have stuck with me. Because he's a really, like, really bad death. And it's especially since Tarzan's, like, trying to stop him. He's trying to be like, no, wait, no. And he just, like, because he's just... It's like Gaston. He's so consumed by his his own stuff that he can't see past it. He so wants to kill the big ape that he can't realize that he is literally in this moment making his own death, essentially. You know, I, th- I think we're going to vote to wrap up. So yeah. Something I want to comment, which I don't think I was going to take. I don't know why, because I want to tell Like, the friendship in the movie, like, with Turk and and, uh, Tantor, like I find it wonderful. Mm-hmm. Like I was saying, I think we went to the <laughs> with Rossi O'Donnell. I think that was the time. Yeah. We went into. Uh, but like I, I like that connection between all three is like something I value because I, I, I think it was one of those things that you notice how much influence you have in your life when things like when you because I value friendship a lot. It's one of the most important yeah. things. Like my friends is like, and I think it's one of those that shows like. You know, Turk is his friend, and they have fun together, and they messed up together, and they, you know, they're pretty much right of die. Like, maybe that's what fast in the And I think for me for the first what time. was great is the fact that Tarzan became friends with them because they were all outsiders in their own ways, in their own things. And that's why he was able to connect with them was because he's an outsider, but so are they, even though... They're an ape and an elephant, respectfully to their own thing. You know, I, I think that, and I agree too. I, I value friendship a lot, and and all all that, and and I think the movie is really, really wonderful at um at showing that, and and showing um showing the value of good friends and, and what they can do for you. Uh, to be yeah. do, to that, to be do, be do, I don't remember that. I don't remember, you, but I know, I know the. I know the sequence. That scene, that scene is really funny and it's really creative because they they literally just do use the, uh, I mean, the environment there, the, the situation to realize the music and the, the spoons and whatever it's in. They literally break out, they break out into somebody. Yeah. But 
Tarson. Uh, what else I want to talk about? I don't know how. Much. Yeah, are there any like wrap up thoughts you have? Because we are going to start wrapping up the show here. Any final thoughts uh, on Tarzan? People need to watch it and respect it. I don't know why people hate it, but uh, there's something I wanted to talk about that I really loved that we haven't talked about. Jane, the Romans, Clayton. Clayton. I, I want to comment more on Clayton. I'm sorry. Okay. That guy's scary. Like, that scared me. Like, you know when, when he starts shooting the, I guess, it's a shotgun what he has, right? It's a shotgun. And Jane and... Yeah, it's a double barrel shotgun. Yeah, Jane and Tarzan are like, Clayton. That, 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 you know, like, they kind of build to his presence, and it's really scary, and I just say, he's really egotistic that he's not able to see what he wants, and what, what other people want, and what's the best for us, he just wants to be the male alpha, which is something a lot of people face right now, and has faced for many times, which we have to erase. But, but just to conclude the movie, I, I, I think... I think by the end, like, as I said at the beginning of this conversation, like, Tarzan does achieve his goal of le- earning the respect of Shurkan. Shurk? Yeah, Shurk. Shurk. Yeah, Kirkan. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to pronounce it. Shurkan, like, and he's... I mother. haven't watched him in a hot minute, so I don't know. Yeah. But... Uh, Is he Cliff? No, he's not Cliff. It's... Ch- no, it's... <laughs> Kershak. 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 Yes, Kershak. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. like... You know, something to comment, because we, we don't comment about this, and I think it's, a, like, the relation with Tarzan, what he has his, uh, is it, what's the name of the mother, the Kala, which is played by Glenn Close in English. I, I find that so great, like, the relationship, the connection they have, and how Tarzan relies to her, and how much he loves her, and vice versa, and that's something I also love about it. Oh my god, this movie, this movie shaped me as a person. I cannot believe that. So, <laughs> hello. No, I want to watch it too. I want to watch that just too for the that's, sake of crying. Uh, but yeah, that's beautiful. It, 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 it's really wonderful looking back at, at, at movies you watch as a kid, like how much like, they have an influence on you and how much they can shape the things you think and how you think and, and looking back at it, it's so great. So Matt, I don't know what you want to say about Tarzan. Uh, yeah, it's a wrap up. I haven't seen Tarzan in a hot minute. Having this discussion makes me really want to sit down and, and watch the movie again. Um, I figured it was a really nice movie about um, family and friendship and, and trying to just, just accept it. Because, you know, Tarzan goes to the human world, but he finds that, like, that's, despite the fact that that's who he is, that's not his world. Um, that's not where he belongs. And I think that's kind of a good message of, you know, like, you know, and his friends, you know, surround yourself with with like-minded people to you people who may not drum to the same beat as everyone else find the other people do that I, I and i do agree with you just in a more general sense about movies we watched as kids yeah they definitely influence us i think especially people like us who you know are, are doing stuff like this in our later years you know we only do this because movies meant something to us and they had a huge influence on how we view the world and and i think you and i would both agree we're the same age growing up when we did in the late when we were born in the late 90s but growing up in the very tail end of the 90s and early aughts i think that was a great time for movies that we had and there were a lot of great movies that came out um from like disney and pixar like we were talking about here um and everything so um so abe where can the good people find you uh online on the interwebs you can follow me Twitter at Abraham25 for Mama Mia 2 and Shrek 2 Love. And you guys, as always, can find me at Kearns underscore Matthew on Twitter, Matt Mooney 611 on YouTube, and right here as host of the Phantom Podcast. Um, bit of changes coming to that series. Um, an episode should be dropping around the time this episode drops, uh, where I'll be talking about James Bond and who I consider to be the best. And my favorite James Bond, because they are separate. I'll get into that in the video. And also the host of Second Look. Um, I don't have an episode in the works right now, but when I do, you'll be sure to hear about it. And as always, you can find both me and Abe as the hosts of Simple Tricks and Nonsense every month. That's right. This is a monthly series every month on Take Free. Um, so, Abe, thank you very much. Great episode, everybody. 
If you enjoyed this episode, please like, comment, share it around to your friends, and let us know in the comments what your first movie um, theater experiences were as a kid. What movie did you go and see? What were some of your favorite movies growing up? What do you think of Monsters, Inc. and Tarzan? All right, so before our internet dies, we're going to make like Doc Brown and get the hell out of here.